Yo, this is Slick Sam, and do not change that dial, do not close this video or go somewhere else, because I have got something interesting for you. Now, some of you may be aware of this, but the entire point of YouTube is that you are a product. They are trying to keep you stuck on the site just long enough, barely entertained, that they can sell you to an advertiser. And a lot of people have tried to make entertainment in the assumption that if they are entertaining, they will be watched, but they don't understand that system. Well, we do understand that system, and we're going to try and do something actually fun with it. We are going to play a game. Now, the first rule of this game is don't close the video. Just watch it all the way through, all right? We need you to do that so you get the watch time because I am going to show you an ad every seven minutes. That's the limit that YouTube will allow, and you won't see an ad every single time. YouTube will pick and choose. I don't have any control of that. But when you do see an ad, tell me what that ad was about. And next time, that'll be the type of game that I try to play. We're going to see if we can align our Let's Plays with the type of ads that you are seeing and see where it goes. Now, if it is an ad for a game, I am not necessarily going to play that game because sometimes it's weird mobile trash and I can't record that. I don't know how. But I will try to find a game that is in that same sort of feel as what you saw in the ads. So tell me what you saw in the ad. You gotta watch all the way through because if you don't see the ad, you can't tell me what you saw. Therefore, I can't figure out what to play next week. So see, there you go. It's kind of like gambling. You've never been excited to get an ad before, but this is going to be your first time you ever look forward to getting an ad. So you know what to tell me you're going to do. So anyway, uh, my job while we play this game is to keep you just barely entertained enough that you don't go do something else. Or, or, or at least, uh, you know, you got to see the ad because otherwise the whole point of this is ruined for both our game and for YouTube. And they won't promote me if you don't watch the ads. So, uh, I thought that I would take things easy on myself and play a game called Hades, which is just released uh, as far as its main version is going, and it is quite a lot of fun. I'm gonna be honest, I really enjoyed this game. I think you can go and buy this game on Steam for $24.99. That's right, I said $24.99. Can you believe that? You're telling me, Sam, for $24.99, I don't believe a game is gonna be that good, but you are gonna be surprised, my friend. Because this game is just leaking personality. In fact, it is leaking personality to such an extent that this game should probably go see a doctor. They say, Doc, I am leaking personality from every orifice. Should I be concerned? And the doctor says, I don't know. We don't actually do video game anatomy in our classes. So, so you gotta go see some other kind of specialist. And there is no real specialist. There's no science behind video games leaking personality. So, you know, you, you gotta see some kind of holistic medicine guy. And that holistic medicine guy is gonna tell you that this game is worth every penny that you pay on it. Not only is it just $24.99, but Steam actually takes 30% off the price of that for themselves. So you're really only paying this game company about $18 for this experience. Can you believe that? $18 for such an incredible experience. You're about to see why I recommend Hades for virtually anyone who's out there looking for a game about a god who's lost in Hades. Or actually, I guess I misconstrue. The place is Tartarus, and also several other locations that have names. Hades is the man. You will never get lost inside the man who runs Tartarus and all these other places. Because that would be disgusting, and Nintendo already did that once. So anyway, in this game, you see that you fight a great deal of orange people. This is not a tan, uh, or perhaps it is a tan. I'm not sure what kind of light exists here in the underworld, but most of the time, things are pretty well lit. It is a very stylish game. It is got a 2D look to it, but they put an outline around it, you know, even though it's 3D. And you go and you talk to these gods, and the gods all exist inside an orb. Why are the gods in orbs? I don't know. It's maybe a more efficient way. It's maybe more of a f an efficient way to actually talk to you. I assume that an orb would be easier to swallow than a lot of other shapes. It is a very large orb. The other thing about gods is that you can never really fully explain why they do certain things. The interesting thing about gods is that we often use their behavior to explain stuff that we don't understand. Why are there spiders? I don't know, some god had a jealous fit at some lady who was really good at weaving stuff, just turned her into spiders. All the spiders, every spider there is, that was this lady. Why did the god do that? That's the thing, that's the thing that you always gotta ask afterward. Why did the god do that? And I don't know why the god does that. I assume that people just find it easier to understand that a human-like entity would do something irrational than accept that a universe would do something irrational. Because a universe is very, very big. You cannot imagine a universe. But you can imagine a person. They're quite a lot smaller. They only get about six feet tall. For example, let's test the theory. Let, let's say we want to know why does ice cream melt? Well, I could tell you there's all kinds of thermodynamics and temperatures and thermometers and all sorts of other crazy things you've almost never heard of. But, but what if I told you that... Ice cream melts because Zeus is the worst person ever. 
See, you get that. You think of that. You think of Zeus, and you imagine, gosh, Zeus made ice cream melt. What a jerk. Now, this game has to try and create that personification of why ice cream melts, and I think that they do a pretty reasonable job. For example, you just saw Ares, and he is like a, like a black dude with a white band over his face. Why does he have the white band over his face? The game never explains, and it has been bugging me since the first time I saw him. Is it a type of war paint? Sometimes people put black bands under their eyes to help prevent light from reflecting into their eyes while they're playing sports, like football. Does Hades play football? I assume he might. It is kind of like a simulation of violent sports. It is a violent sport. It's like a simulation of combat. Hades is probably a huge football fan. Which football team does he love the most? I don't know. It never tells you. Hades is a game full of some of the most head-scratching mysteries about the Greek gods you'll ever ask yourself, and it can be yours today for $24.99, available on Steam. 30% of that goes to Steam, only $18 to the developer. They are practically getting stolen from at these prices. It is amazing what they sell to you on this game. And although they don't tell you whether or not Ares likes football or which team he likes, even though you know he loves football, it does tell you a lot of other things. Like, good lord, I have never seen gods talk so much about various things that surprisingly I am interested to hear about. That is the biggest surprise for this game to me, is that I was interested to hear virtually everything that they said. I didn't hate anyone in this game. That almost never happens. Most games have at least one character who I'm supposed to love who I actually hate for good reason. Now, okay, we got about 30 seconds, and we're gonna come up and I'm gonna sell you to an advertiser, possibly two, the way things have been going. Now, what I need you to do is watch that advertisement, then tell me in the comments what you see. If you don't get an advertisement, that's okay. We're gonna run another one in about seven more minutes. You'll tell me what that ad is, and I will take that into account when I decide what I'm gonna do next, okay? All right, hang in there for me. Here it comes. Six, seven, eight. I'm counting up. Here it goes. Okay, now you may have seen an ad. If you didn't see an ad, again, that's fine. You'll get another chance in about seven minutes. First time you've ever been excited to see an ad. Write in the comments. You can pause the video if you got to, but write in the comments. Tell me what you saw, and I, I will use that information, okay? So, now we meet the boatman Charon. He ferries the dead down to Tartarus and all other places, I guess. At some point, there's some kind of judgment, but I don't know who does the judging. I didn't look into it. We talked to Athena here, another interesting black lady with white hair, she's got an owl gun. Either that or it's just a very small owl that's sitting on her finger and she kind of holds it like a gun. I'm not really clear, I don't get a very good look at it. Fascinating woman. You too can unlock all of this woman's secrets and mysteries and have conversations with her for only $24.99, $18 to the developer, available on Steam, the game is Hades. Go buy it now. When you pick it up, tell them Slick Sam sent you. Advertise my brand a little bit while I advertise theirs. That's right. Now. When it comes to these ads, when you watch them, I'm not telling you to click on them, okay? That would be fraudulent. I just want you to watch them. Don't click on them unless you're legitimately interested in what it is they have to show you. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but, but don't click on them. You just gotta watch them, okay? I just need to know what they're about, all right? That's the rule, all right? We're not trying to pull anything over anyone. This is as honest as I can possibly be. Slick Sam is nothing but honest. I pride myself on it. When you go to this company's game page and tell them I sent you, you tell them I'm the most honest man who ever lived, okay? I would never do anything untoward towards anyone. So anyway, here we are, uh, chopping someone's grandma's head clear in half, because each of these are apparently the souls of the dead, and I don't know how many of them are actually really all that combat ready. We got a buff Donald Trump here, and sometimes we get a fat Donald Trump. Now, I think it's amazing that they give you both options so that no matter which way you lean politically, you can be excited about this game. Two depictions of one person for the price of one game, $24.99, game is Hades. Now, the game doesn't only just give you options to kill old ladies' skulls, it also gives you the option to choose different doorways. One doorway leads to Charon, where you can buy things, a man after my own heart. The guy has amazing deals like I've never seen. Other places lead you to a pomegranate fruit which increases your godlike power, because fruits and gods are like two peas in a pod. It makes perfect sense if you think about it. The one pea empowers the other pea through the power of brotherhood and friendship and also whatever is in a pomegranate. I assume a lot of vitamins and minerals. Now here we walked into a, wo a room of a woman in her pajamas. She is got gray skin, so I assume that she's either dead or never gets out in the sun. She only has a single wing, so she must be related to Sephiroth of Final Fantasy VII fame, who is supposed to be a one-winged angel, even though actually he has like seven wings or something like that. I get distracted. I'm talking about a different game. Now, this woman 
is going through her goth phase, but she is clearly an adult. Which means that she must be very insecure and not sure what she's doing with her life. That makes her incredibly dangerous. She is going to be prone to all kinds of mood swings and weird accusations, so we need to stay light on our feet and make sure that we don't get trapped by her various insinuations and razor-sharp winged attacks. Now, a woman who's not sure about herself is one of the most dangerous opponents you'll ever face. Because if you think about it, since she's not sure of herself, she doesn't know what she's gonna do, how do you know what she's gonna do? You can't predict her if she can't predict her. She also wears a lovely shade of blue. So at the very least, we know that she's fashion smart in spite of still being in a phase usually reserved for teenagers. She's also able to summon Donald Trump at will. I'm not sure how she developed such high-powered connections into the government, but it's something that we need to look out for. Who knows what kind of things could result in that or her other friends that she's summoned for... Apparently we've interrupted a slumber party is what I'm gonna guess because there's a lot of people in pajamas and they're just throwing around sparkle balls everywhere. It's more sparkle balls than you could possibly handle. Could be all yours for $24.99 today. Buy on Steam, $18 to the developer, like seven or eight dollars for Steam itself. I'm terrible at math, don't quote me on that. Now, the real question we gotta ask ourselves is where exactly did this depressed goth woman, where was she gonna sleep? Because I don't see hardly anywhere to sit or to do anything except for blow me up with these magic sparkle attacks. Why are they purple? Now this is an interesting question. If you think about how things burn, if something burns purple, that must mean there's some kind of chemical component. What kind of chemical burns purple? I don't know. I'm pretty sure green is copper, so we know she's not burning copper. Purple is probably something really dangerous like plutonium. We probably now have radiation sickness and are gonna die from cancer over the long run, and this victory is nothing but a Pyrrhic one. In fact, I noticed that a lot of these sconces, which I believe is what they're called, were also burning purple flames. That is a very bad sign. That means that the entire room was probably irradiated with some kind of horrible chemical. If not plutonium, then something equally awful. It's lucky that we got out of there. Of course, now we're up here in blue flame, which is a little bit more natural, but that must be a very hot flame over there. It looks soothing, but do not be fooled. Blue flames are incredibly hot. Hot like the amazing deal that this game is being sold for, only $24.99. I still cannot believe what a low price that they are giving away this fantastic gem for. If you have not already purchased this game, what are you waiting for? Go out there, go to that Steam page and buy it right now. Do not turn off the video, we got another ad coming up in just two minutes or so. Remember, just watch the ad, don't click on it unless you're legitimately interested in it. You just gotta watch the ad, I just gotta know what you saw, that's the whole thing here, okay? So. That'll come up later. Uh, now we're moving on up and we got giant skull heads. Grandma's skull but multiplied by 15 and it drops out of the sky. Why does it do that? I don't know. How does it leap up in the sky in the first place? It looks like someone just grabs it and pulls it right up. I assume by force of sheer grandma. Because as we all know, grandma is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. Whenever grandma wants something, she produces it through sheer force of will. Grandma could fly if she wanted to if it meant seeing her grandkids and that's what she really wanted. Now some of you may not have such grandmas and I am sad to hear that. I am sad to hear you do not have a grandma powerful enough to lift herself up into the sky and then crush you bodily when she comes back down. But we can't all have fantastic grandmas like that. Now, we're also looking at pointy head skeleton. Quite the fashion statement on this guy. Why a pointy head? Now here's where you come into the Greek stuff making a lot of sense. As you say, why would the skeleton wear a pointy hat like that? And the universe doesn't make a lot of sense, but when you say Zeus did it, you think of Zeus and you imagine what a jerk Zeus is makes this skeleton wear this hat. What a jerk. Now it all makes sense, right? Only six feet, this guy Zeus. You can, you can imagine that. You can't imagine an unfair universe. All right, it's time for an ad. Here we go. Okay, now if you saw an ad, tell me in the comments what it was you saw. I can't make my next video unless you guys tell me what you saw. So that's gotta be, that's gotta be how it is, okay? Now, if you didn't see an ad this time, do not despair, because we're going to have probably one more ad at the end of the video if you wait till the uh, post-credits roll or whatever. And uh, if you saw an ad at the start of the video, you can tell me what that ad was about too, all right? And, and again, just to reiterate, you're not supposed to click the ads unless you legitimately are interested in that product and you want to know more or something. You just have to watch it, okay? I just need you to tell me what it is. That's all we're doing here. Now, as far as what we're doing in the game, it looks like we're being forced to choose between Charon's Fantastic Deals and a Purple Crystal. And of course, I'm gonna go with Charon's Fantastic Deals because who doesn't love a fantastic deal? Do you want a fantastic deal? 
You can buy this game for $24.99 on Steam right now. It can be yours. $18 to the developer. Steam takes 30% off the top. That's the reality. That's the deal. And I cannot stress enough again what an amazing deal it is. I am I am so glad that I discovered this game. I discovered it from, from friends just talking about it and sounding really invested. And, and you know, uh, it's not how I, I don't hear word of mouth about fun stuff hardly anymore. Mostly I just hear terrible things on the internet. Everyone is sad and awful. So anyway, this game is not sad and awful. We got another skeleton in a pointy hat, but this time he's carrying around purple. Now his explosions don't explode purple, which is probably for the best because that means we're safe from more radioactive exposure. However, we are experienced we are being exposed to more purple sparkle balls from slumber party students or whatever it is these people are supposed to be. We also have these blue skeletons. Now this is a nice switch up from the uh, original orange skeletons. I'm not sure what the colors mean, if it's a status symbol or what. When you die, do you get to choose? I see that there's also some skeletons in the lava. I don't know if it's a fun time being a lava skeleton or not, but it looks painful. Now, in a real shakeup for things, we've got Dionysus trying to sell us uh, uh, various boons or power-ups. This is what the gods, aside from being great conversationalists, give you these power-ups. Now, these power-ups are an amazing deal, maybe not as an amazing deal as the $24.99 that you can buy Hades for right now on Steam. But, uh, the power-ups are still pretty amazing. For example, from Athena, I got this shield that only works some of the time. Kind of like my car. Except, unlike my car, it cost me nothing. Now, you don't get an amazing deal like that for free very often, but Athena offers it. I'm not sure if it was something that the owl on her finger recommended or she came up with that all by herself, but all the other gods seem to go along with it too. Pretty great guys, all things considered. And ladies, of course. And speaking of ladies, it appears that we have been assaulted by a floating grandma head and also a flying, body-crushing grandma head. So between the two of them, we have grandma power escalated to its highest potential level. All the way up to just like sh levitating by sheer force of will and spitting out little rocks that turn you into a rock. Now I recall the last time that my grandmother ever did something like that to me and I can't recall why she did it, but I do know that when she does it she's very serious. I think I just completely blanked out the memory of why it happened. It was a very traumatizing moment in my life. Grandma power is not a thing to be trifled with. However, having defeated one grandma, we will now move on to the second grandma, who is a lot more predictable on account of the fact that this grandma does not shoot projectiles because she herself is a projectile. And now I'm looking at this grandma and I'm trying to figure out exactly what it is I'm seeing. And, and you could say it's just a single skull, but I don't think so. I believe it is a skull sitting on some kind of throne made out of the same bone material. I'm not actually sure. It, it, it would be very much like grandma to not get out of her recliner while she tries to crush me to death for whatever my transgression may be. Now here we see another god, this is Artemis. Artemis has deer antlers because she lives in the wood and occasionally needs to spar with other deer for right to claim mates. Now normally the female deer don't do this, but Artemis is a very hands-on god and very in touch with nature, so she gets on just, just all that nature stuff, real big on that. I also noticed that she had a bunch of quails sitting on her bow, which is just an incredible thing that she does. Can you imagine trying to shoot a bow with a bunch of quails sitting on it? The added challenge is truly one worthy of a god. I mean, can we truly say that Artemis doesn't have this whole act together? I, I don't think she does. You know what else has got its act together? This video game, which could be yours right now for $24.99. A third of that goes to Steam, only $18 for the developers. Again, a complete steal, just an amazing game, lots of fun. You will love it if you buy it. Go buy it right now. Don't stop watching my video, though. Go buy it after the video is done. Circling back to that whole Artemis thing, it just now occurs to me that she's the god of the hunt and yet apparently animals come to her and are comfortable enough sitting on her bow that she could just grab a quail and, and strangle it right there. Which seems a little unfair, a little out of the spirit of the hunt. Maybe she warns the quails ahead of time. She says, hey, I'm gonna shoot one of you. Make a run for it. And the quail's like, oh god, not again. Now, okay, so here we go. We come up. It looks like we got another boss fight. This is... Uh, what the Native Americans refer to as the deadly lava copperhead, lava moccasin. That's what it is. It's a de deadly lava moccasin. You can tell from the triangular shape of its head that the little blue arrows it's spitting out are probably poisonous. Now, uh, I assume that you can't be poisoned by those lava arrows because you've already developed an immunity from the previous purple fire that's also here. We are in another plutonium situation, in fact. We are going to die from cancer, regardless of whether or not we defeat any of these bosses. This is, this is truly the most insidious design for a boss room ever. We, we should probably contact other bosses and let them know, get, get them in on this. Where we can sell you a boss place that has death 
written all over it, regardless of whether or not the, the villains win. In the sequel, you won't have any opposition. Now I can't also help but notice that these sconces are decorated with skulls, but around here skeletons are actually alive, so I got a question, are those skulls, are those important skeletons that live around the underworld, or are they people who got stuck in a sconce and don't know how to get out? It's a big question we gotta ask ourselves that has totally different meaning in this context. Now the other thing I'm noticing is that when these skeleton heads die, they burst into lava, which leads me to believe they must be just made out of lava completely, or are packed full of some kind of explosive powder. Now why exactly it is they're packed full of explosive powder is beyond me. I have to assume that Zeus did it, because he's a dick, and now it all makes sense knowing that Zeus is a dick and he would do that type of thing. You see, everything works out when you imagine a guy does it. If you imagine a crazy universe that's all mixed up, you can't wrap your head around it. But when some weird dude does it, it makes sense. Greek myths in a nutshell. Why did Zeus do it? Zeus is a jerk. He's irrational like that. That's all you gotta know. Now, we're not doing so great as far as killing this boss goes, on account of the fact that it still has a lot of health bar left. Now, the health bar thing is an interesting situation that's been in a lot of games, I think to give players hope, or to cause them to fall completely into despair. But I can't help but notice this boss's health bar is larger than mine. At least percentage-wise, which is not a good sign for my existence. And some of you, who are pretty savvy, might notice that this video ends in about a minute. What does that mean? Well, it means that I kept you minimally entertained to watch for this long, and that at the end of this, uh, you're gonna see hopefully one more ad, and you can tell me what that is, ad is. It is one more chance to contribute to this whole thing and tell me what it is I'm gonna play next time. Uh, now, when, you, you, when you're done watching this video, that's when you can go and you can buy this game, Hades, $24.99. Tell him Slick Sam sent you. Tell him he's the most honest YouTuber you have ever seen. Not only did I, not only was I upfront about the fact that I am selling you to advertisers, but also that I am selling you this game. Honest to goodness, none of this garbage like, oh, I just play the entire game and watch all the cutscenes and everything because I'm promoting it. Honestly, legitimately, Hades, $24.99, available on Steam for PC, and I think maybe some other stuff. Go buy it, it's a great game, go buy the game. I am, for real, legitimately, going to try and sell you whatever the heck it is I'm playing, so that this ridiculous, flimsy pretext that we are promoting games is actually true in this case. First time ever, most honest YouTube salesman who ever existed. Go check out my Patreon, Don Somewhere, on Patreon, pay me money, Tell me what game to play next. You guys have a fantastic time. Slick Sam's!